What's up everyone, I'm Tommy with Studio Sense. Hope you're having an awesome Friday. If today's not Friday for you, you're either looking forward to Friday or you just had a fantastic weekend. Here we are in June, so six months. We're at the halfway point, guys. And it's really interesting when you look back, you think that there's been kind of a scarcity when it comes to men's fragrances, but there have been a ton of really good solid releases. So when we come back, we're gonna go over my 10, my top 10 designer fragrances that I feel are the best so far. That and more, so stay tuned. Hey guys, and welcome back. So today we're taking a look at my top 10 favorite designer fragrances that have been released this year so far. So let's go ahead and dive right into our number 10. Our number 10 fragrance was created by Antoine Mason Dues from the house of Salvatore Ferragamo. It is Salvatore Ferragamo's Intense Leather. Like if you're a fan of Gucci Guilty Absolute, you will love Ferragamo's Intense Leather. It has that really nice, rich, lightly medicinal leather body about it, but it also has a really nice open. You've got mandarin orange, pink pepper, clary sage to give you a really spicy, fresh, citrusy open. And then it smoothly leads right on into that nice medicinal, very smooth leather. And it's super versatile. And that's why it's my number 10, Salvatore Ferragamo's Intense Leather. Coming in at my number nine is a very colorful fragrance from Zadig E. Voltaire. It is This Is Love. This Is Love encapsulates everything that you like about This Is Him by Zadig and Voltaire, or Zadig E. Voltaire, and it turns it into a really nice spring and summer offering. It's basically mandarin orange, bergamot, sandalwood. It's nice and creamy and powdery. It's just a wonderfully creamy, vanillic fragrance that's gonna be perfect for spring and summer, but also moving on into cooler weather into fall. So this makes this a hyper versatile release plus that two-tone bottle it's light green or yellow and blue is just really cool and that's why it's my number nine all right guys moving on down to number eight now when it comes to flankers it's hard for a flanker to be unique because it's already got a precedent set so it's just trying to be something a little bit different while encapsulating what's great about the original fragrance and that's what they've done in this number eight release by Victor and Rolf. It is Spice Bomb Infrared. Probably deserves a higher spot just because I'm an absolute fan of Spice Bomb and that original flavor is definitely built into the DNA of Infrared with a primary focus on the red genre and I think they do it successfully. This one features red apple, red pepper, uh, habanero, chilies, um, you know, anything that's red, cinnamon, tobacco, amber wood. I mean, there's a ton of notes in here that do a great job of representing what's best about the red genre. And if you really like Spice Bomb, what's not to love about Spice Bomb Infrared? So far out of all the Spice Bomb flankers since Spice Bomb Extreme, this one I think is my favorite. Not over extreme, but after extreme. And that's why it's my number eight spot. Coming in at my number seven is a fragrance that I was anticipating for a while. And I can't say that I was let down, but I was expecting something a little bit more. However, I am still pleased with the results and therefore it's made this list. It's a really nice wintertime fragrance from Azaro. Azaro's The Most Wanted. The Most Wanted, while still being a super solid flanker, is not quite as good. Wanted by Night represents everything that you want in a date night fragrance in a very strong, pungent banger of a package. And this is a very worthy flanker. It's definitely a worthwhile release. The Most Wanted is a great gourmand fragrance, but it's just not as strong as what I thought it would be. And therefore, it takes my number seven spot, which isn't a bad place to be. Primarily, what I really enjoy about The Most Wanted, not only does it have that Wanted by Night or Wanted DNA in there, the original Wanted, which is a great fragrance, by the way. This one basically is Guatemalan cardamom. You've got some toffee in the heart. Sticking your nose in this is a fantastic experience, especially if you are a lover of gourmand fragrances. That combination of cardamom, bourbon, vanilla, and vetiver is so good in this fragrance, and that's why it's my number seven. Azaro's The Most Wanted. All right, guys, rapidly moving on down the line, we are at our number six. Number six has a little bit of a nostalgic, actually a lot of nostalgic value to me, but the fragrance itself stands on its own. It is an older fragrance. It's kind of a new spin on an older fragrance from the house of Ralph Lauren. Of course, you know what I'm talking about. Polo Cologne. This for me harkens so many memories of high school and yesteryear. 
but it does have a fantastic new modern spin to the fragrance itself. While embedding the original DNA in the fragrance, it takes that, it pushes the boundaries of it a little bit further in a really nice aromatic masculine man's experience. This has basil, basil, spearmint, violet leaf absolute. You've got some clary sage in here. There's quite a bit of ambroxan built in as well. And that, ambro that heady ambroxan gives it that really nice modern body, air, and volume. And that's what makes this one of the best new releases and, in my estimation, number six. Guys, if you haven't tried this one, even if you didn't like the original Polo, this is such a nice eau de parfum. That is Ralph Lauren's Polo Cologne. All right, guys, just like we pushed up to the halfway point in this year, we're at the halfway point in this list. We're down to our top five. Coming in at my number five is a fragrance that probably should take a little bit higher rating. However, it's again, stacking up against all these new releases, it was really hard to pick specific spots, but I think this one very much well deserves the number five spot from Paco Rabanne. It is Invictus Victory. Invictus Victory just rolls off the tongue really well. It's a perfect wintertime flanker, and weren't we all kind of waiting for that, right? There were so many different flankers from the original Invictus that are spring and summer offerings, and some of them kind of bleed into fall, but none of them just as good as Invictus Victory does. It is the Invictus we were all waiting for for cold weather. A perfect cold weather answer to the Invictus DNA. You've got lemon, pink pepper, lavender, frankincense, vanilla, amber, all rolled into a very excessively dark, rich, wonderfully Invictus style wintertime fragrance and yet still reaching that bright end of the spectrum that we all know and love, that lightly semi bubblegummy air. It's a really nice, sweet, near gourmand fragrance without going into that, you know, edible gourmand territory. And that's why I really love this fragrance. In fact, I can't wait till cooler weather to start wearing Victory so much more than I was able to wear it when it first came out. So that's why it takes my number five spot, Invictus Victory by Paco Rabanne. All right, guys, coming in at number four, I honestly struggled with this one for a while. It kept reaching. This was actually number one for a few days, and I've actually knocked about an inch off of this fragrance, which is crazy, which means I've been wearing it gangbusters since I actually got it. It is Yves Saint Laurent's blue answer to La Nuit de Lome. It's La Nuit de Lome Blue Electrique. That's right, this is the blue version of La Nuit de Lome, that ever-loved, iconic date night fragrance and staple. Basically, it's the easiest way to put it. Ash said it, I'll repeat it. If you are a lover, which what man isn't a lover of La Nuit de Lome, that wonderfully creamy, rich, lightly nutty cardamom is basically just embedded into this with a very rich, addictive blue body. As such, Blue Electrique is a fantastic date night fragrance. I've been wearing it day and night for over a week and I love this fragrance. It's got excellent body, great performance. This opens with a fresh, juicy burst of bergamot, cardamom, and ginger, so you get that cardamom straight out the gate. Moving into that floral, rich lavender and geranium, settling on that dry, green, elegant vetiver and woody, sharp cedar wood. Blue Electrique is everything that you love about La Nuit de Lome in a blue fragrance with that whole blue genre built in. And not just a derivative shower gel blue, it's doing its own unique thing as a blue fragrance and that's why it's my number four spot. Yves Saint Laurent's La Nuit de Lome Blue Electrique. Coming in at my number three spot, literally everything about this fragrance I love and I think it's a fantastic end point maybe, and let's say decide to go somewhere else with this DNA, but I don't know you know, where else they can go with it, but is of course Emporio Armani's Stronger With You Absolutely. This incorporates everything about the original Stronger With You, Stronger With You uh, Intensely, Stronger With You Freeze, Stronger With You Leather, and finally Stronger With You Absolutely. You still got that focus on the glazed chestnuts, the bourbon vanilla, the rich, dark, toffee-like caramel, except it's a little bit less caramelized than this version, which is a nice attenuation to that dark, rich DNA and flavor. But that rich, resinous Elemi and then you've got the bourbon vanilla along with the rum, makes this a really nice, lightly boozy version of the fragrance, which is my ultimate favorite. It's my number three spot. And again, I know a lot of these are wintertime fragrances, so I can't wait till cold weather sets in so we can bust these out and use them again. That is Stronger With You Absolutely by Emporio Armani. 
Coming in at my number two spot is a fragrance from a line of fragrances that have set a precedent in the blue genre. Fragrance for men. It is from the house of Yves Saint Laurent. Yes, YSL has two releases in this list. It is YSL's Y Le Parfum. Y Le Parfum was also my number one for a little while. It did get bumped out of the way because of a, a new inventive creative fragrance that we'll talk about in a moment. But this one, guys, if you've never tried the Y DNA and you're struggling over which one to get, you know, Y Live Intense or a Y Eau de Parfum, the original Y Eau de Toilette or Y Eau Fraiche, which are all good in their own right. This to me is the obvious evolution of the scent profile and the penultimate Y DNA in Y Le Parfum. It's got everything that you love about the Y line. It still reaches that really bright upper register so well, that fruity bright without the super sweet. So they pulled a little bit of the sweetness. They've added a little bit more dry uh, aldehydic, you know, lightly powdery, which matures it up quite a bit. And also, believe it or not, broadens the versatility of this. So it's a super hyper versatile fragrance. This is creative, this is inventive, it's uh, refreshing, and there's just not a place that you can't wear this fragrance and have it be appropriate and pull compliments at the same time. It's a fantastic addition, possibly end to the Y line. Again, I don't know where they would go from here. They'd have to go in a new creative place, I think, because again, this is the apex predator of the Y line. That is Y Le Parfum by Yves Saint Laurent. And that's why it's taken my number two spot. All right, guys, you've patiently waited through this list to get to my number one top designer fragrance of 2021, at least so far. It is a fragrance from a line of fragrances that are very well known for spring and summer. It is, of course, Dolce & Gabbana's Light Blue Forever. As I was going through each one of the characteristics of these fragrances, uniqueness, creativity, versatility, uh, performance, and realism in terms of notes. And there were just so many things about this that I kept going back to that it had to take my number one. This is probably the most realistic grapefruit, like super bright, rich, lightly zest, and meaning the peel. It's got that grapefruit zest built in. And when you smell it, if you've never smelled it before, it will surprise you, it's so good. And that grapefruit zest or appeal about the fragrance, which is primarily what it carries in that open, it actually carries down into the heart of the fragrance and a little bit into the dry down. But the dry down itself is equally as revealing as the open is. It's what I love about this fragrance. It carries two tones. It carries that nice grapefruit zest, and then it carries a lightly mandarin orangey, basically tropical summer built into the base as well. But it's very masculine too. So it has all the attributes that a number one fragrance should have, and that's why Dolce & Gabbana's Light Blue Forever is my number one best designer fragrance of 2021 so far. Well guys, I'm not gonna keep you any longer. Thank you so much for stopping by and checking out my top 10 best designer fragrances released in 2021 thus far. We still have many months left ahead for new releases. Who knows, there might be some surprises along the way. There are quite a few honorable mentions that I'm gonna roll them out. In the liner notes of this video, I did mention that I was gonna let you know my greatest buying regret of 2021 so far. It is also a Dolce & Gabbana fragrance. It is Dolce & Gabbana, The One Luminous Night. I missed out on that. I still wanna get it. I'm hoping it's gonna show up. It is a limited exclusive edition. Uh, Herod's, I believe, was exclusively carrying it. I'm so sad that I missed out on that fragrance and I'm hoping to pick it up in the near future. Just throwing that out there as an FYI to commingle with all the other information that I dropped today. Guys, thanks so much for stopping by and checking out today's top 10 list. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you enjoyed these fragrances. If you have any of them or all of them, please let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are on each of these and how you rate them. Thanks again for watching today's video. And as always, thank you so much for your support on my channel. I'm Tommy with Studio Sense, and I'll see you tomorrow.